James Lapine, uh, you adapted your own play, uh, well, your own book of the musical, Into the Woods, into a screenplay. Uh, what was the biggest challenge that you faced in this adaptation? Um, I, what if I said I didn't have a big challenge? That would be good. <laughs> Is that okay? That's okay, yes. I mean, I don't know that it was... Uh, I mean, I guess the biggest challenge was having to eliminate material from the movie. Right. Uh, kind of like, you know, mutilating your baby a little bit. But. Right. Well, what was the thing that you had to cut out of it that was the hardest to cut? Well, we cut quite a bit of music out, so mm -hmm. that was hard. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a movie, and you know, the show's the show. It's been around for a long time. It's hopefully going to continue to be around. So, right. uh, you know, I, I think it's fine. Right. Well, I was struck by how um, it didn't feel like when I was watching it, uh, and I'm familiar with the play, that there was anything that had been cut out of it. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Most people feel it's pretty faithful to the original material, so that's a good thing. Right. So you, uh, doing your own adaptation, uh, you spoke earlier about how there had been other attempts yeah. at doing this. Can you talk a bit about those? What was sort of missing that you were able to bring to it? In a sense? Oh, well, the other, there was only one other attempt, and that was a, almost a um, recreation of it, mm -hmm. you know, reinterpretation. So I guess what I brought to it was more the original intent than mm -hmm. the first time out. Right. I think the adapters then <clears throat> felt some need to kind of make it their own and, and uh, spin it a different way. Right. Well, what is the difficulty of, you know, because obviously theater and film are two completely different mediums while still having that same basic, you're telling a story. Uh, you know, what is the, uh, the challenge of not making it stagey or too theatrical? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, first of all, I don't think everything lends itself to be a movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, just sometimes people will adapt plays or musicals and they're not cinematic. Mm -hmm. And so I think this fortunately is. And, uh, and I think that the reverse is true. They've often adapted a lot of movies to musicals, mm -hmm. which don't work on stage either. Right. Uh, so uh, this one, I think, is just naturally meant to be opened up and, and to be seen in a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think there has to be more of a reason to do something than to just do it. You know, it's, right. there has to, you have to say, gee, this will work as a movie because, or uh, you know, there's, there has to be an underlying passion behind it mm -hmm. for it to, to succeed. Right. Uh, now, let's talk a bit about uh, the play and uh, how, you know, you and Sondheim have worked together on a number of things, and you really brought a kind of adult sensibility to the Broadway musical. Now, this is something that's, well, I don't know if I would call it adult, but maybe a more, uh, in some instances, um, ambitious, right. maybe, uh, attempt to do things as musicals. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I mean, and how it relates to Into the Woods, what I mean by adult is you have this show that takes all of these fairy tales, uh, these children's stories, and you give them a, a mature theme. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for instance, Rap the story of Rapunzel, which we all know very well, a uh, young princess who gets locked away in a tower by a witch. What's really interesting is that you give this witch maternal feelings mm -hmm. and you make it about uh, the desire for parents to protect their children mm -hmm. from the world. Well, I think um, what was interesting is hearing a fairy tale as a child or a young person and then looking at it as an adult. Mm -hmm. It means something often completely different, and you relate to it differently. And I think the reason the show has fortunately been around now for all these years is that people kind of grew up with it the way you grow up with a fairy tale. So kids who see Into the Woods tell me, gee, I saw it, and I was Little Red in school, or yeah. I related to Jack, and now they're parents of kids, and they relate to the baker, and 
in my instance, going back to it, you know, I I was sort of the baker in when I wrote it, and now I feel like the baker's father. So right. uh, I I think that um, what we did, I I, I would I, I take. I, I thank you for it, but I'm not sure it wasn't all there to begin with. It's just a matter of, of exposing it or refracting it through our own sensibility to right. uh, look at it that maybe a little bit more complicated way. And then, of course, we we continue the stories after the stories end, which is then becomes very very personal and, and um, you know, as territory people aren't familiar with. Right, and it's interesting, uh, you know, because obviously the the play is divided into two acts. Act one being where you more or less relate all of these classic fairy tales as they are written more or less, but they're intertwining and yeah. the characters are coming in and out of each other's stories. And then it's in the second act where after everything is happily ever after, you say, no, 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 there's more that's going to happen after this. Well, what we're doing is, you know, um, cause and effect, really. Mm -hmm. What we were playing with was what is this notion of happily ever after? And are we feeding maybe our children a slight false hope mm -hmm. in reading these stories to which, and I feel it's, there's a kind of, uh, well, we wrote it in the 80s, which right. was the Reagan era, where I think there was a little bit of feeling everything will just be okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, not worrying so much about other people and just, you know, enjoying the, the good years and, uh, Trickle down economy and whatnot, yeah. and, and and of course it was the time of the AIDS crisis, which in the theater was some hanging over our heads, mm -hmm. and so I think it, you know, maybe consciously or not, it reflected a period of time in which we wrote it, and uh, um, so I think the idea behind it was to uh, take a look at what we want as individuals and how that affects us as as a community, right. And in your collaboration with Sondheim, uh, can you talk a bit about uh, what that was, uh, what you gave to each other, in a sense, you know, what each of you brought to the writing of this show or Sundays in the Park with George, you know? Well, um, uh, it's a marriage, you know, when you work with somebody, and I guess these are our children, so... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what we brought uh, to the material as much as what we brought to each other. Right. And in my, when we met, he was obviously a wildly experienced and successful person, and I was an up-and-coming mm -hmm. person who, frankly, had only done one musical in my whole life and only written a handful, of, barely a handful of plays. So from him, I got a great deal of uh, just craft. Mm -hmm. And I think what I offered to him in return was a kind of freshness take on things because I just didn't have the track record and experience. So I was looking at things from a much, uh, in many ways, naive but pure mm -hmm. perspective. So I think it, uh, we work differently. He's very methodical and um, I'm very kind of quixotic and mm -hmm. uh, I work very quickly and without a lot of self-censorship, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we, we met at a good time in our lives and we were able to offer each other contrasts in, in how we see the world. Mm -hmm. So when you decide, all right, we're going to turn this into a movie, uh, well, what was it that... I think we decided to let Rob Marshall turn right. it into a movie. Well, I, I was, I was, it wasn't <laughs> like we were out selling it. And, right, yeah. You know, going door to door, would you like to make a movie of this? Although right. I tried a little of that when it first came out without success. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyway. So what did Rob Marshall bring to this where you said, okay, this guy can handle turning our baby into a movie? Uh, Rob Marshall brought passion. I mean, he's just very passionate to do it. It spoke to him. Uh, he saw it visually. It was a story he wanted to tell, and uh, you know, it was a no-brainer. Somebody's that enthusiastic about something, uh, and I think also he was willing and anxious to keep it uh, respectful of the original material. And I think after the other experience, for me anyway, I I responded to that. Right, because you've written more than you've written your fair share of screenplays as well. Yeah. 
So how did those experiences differ from working with Rob Marshall? Well, yeah, it's an interesting question because it depends. Every job is different. You know, some jobs you're hired to do. Some jobs you uh, have written screenplays that haven't been produced that I self-generated and wrote on spec. Um, each, each situation seems to dictate uh, the experience, I guess. Um, in this case, it was a first being able to adapt something that I'd written for a screenplay, and um, I was glad to have had it. Right. Now, this being an awards website, I must ask you, you've won a Pulitzer. It's true. You've won some Tonys. It's true. Uh, how does that? <laughs> Let's go up. I'm going to go through the ones I did win. <laughs> this feels like a year where I didn't win a few things. Right. <laughs> well, how does that, um, how does that, I don't want to say change your life, but in a way change your career? Well, on one hand, I was lucky. I, I, I got the bulk of those awards when I was younger, mm -hmm. and it obviously gave me some street cred and... Uh, I think on a certain level, I took it a little bit for granted, not meaning that I wasn't happy to receive it. I just didn't realize what a big deal it was at the time. Right. So um, I think awards um, can swing any which way, you know. And um, I remember being at one of those award ceremonies and a friend of mine who was so talented and was nominated and didn't win. She said to me, you know, what's going to happen? One day I'm going to win one of these things, and it's going to be for something that's not nearly as good as what I did this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it's, um, you know, it's part of our business. It's part of the, you know, it's part of what we do. And, and now I look back and think, gee, how lucky was I? And right. uh, uh, it's nice to be recognized. Uh, I think the Academy Awards are interesting because... Unlike theater, the Tony Awards are are not handed out so much by your peers. You know, you have a nominating committee that maybe will have one writer on it or one director, and they're like academics and right. journalists. Whereas I think my wife is in the Academy and mm -hmm. has actually won a couple of Academy Awards. So right. um, I think there's something much more fair about them because at least people are being nominated in their category by their peers, which... Um, seems to me to make a lot of sense. Right. Well, thank you so much for taking nice my time. Nice to meet off. you. Nice to meet you. Take care. You too, thank you. Did you like this movie?